Okay, now this is imposed by connecting it to a drive system where one is driven directly by the motor, the other one is connected through a gear. The diameter of the gears are different such that uh, there is a definite required uh, friction ratio because of which there is uh, called shearing. Now we have designed, uh, defined what is shearing, the difference between the linear speed meters per minute here and meters per minute here, whatever, then the gap between them. So that is what we said as shear rate and because of uh, shear rate there is uh, possibility of uh, mixing. The question we stopped in the last class was if there is a mixing, is it uh, happening around the circumference and is it happening laterally? That was the question I guess uh, we defined. So, uh, the shear rate we defined as delta V by D, uh, the difference in speed. Normally, the speed is uh, meters per minute. So, it can be uh, 8 meters or 10 meters or even 25 meters, or it depends on uh, the actual operation, but uh, not in terms of hundreds of meters, it is a few meters per minute. Now, uh, the band formation, that is what we will look at uh, today. Uh, we will just see how a mill actually looks like. Uh, the drawing was very bad, so you can see how it looks like in a photograph. The front roll, the back roll. Uh, I'll show you one more figure. The bearing here, one more here, and this is a, a system for connecting cooling water system, cooling water. Now the upper side is uh, provided not with every uh, mill, but some mills these are given as an accessory. Uh, we'll see that what it is. This is used in cases where you need uh, an automation in the case where manual interference can be uh, reduced. Kind of automation can be introduced by putting this uh, accessory on the top. But if you look at the original uh, without all the accessories, these two are the chucks, C-H-U-C-K, chuck. So the role of these chucks is, you see the, the roll ends here and there is a gap here and here. So that gap is a little uh, not desirable because the material inside here, here will, if they are, this is movable, movable along the road, if you can keep it in the end side, you get a bigger maximum width of the rolls. But if you have lesser volume for mixing, you can control that by moving the chucks to middle. So that you get a smaller weight, uh, which means you can handle less amount of uh, material. That means batch volume can be uh, controlled. The maximum batch volume is possible when the chucks are far apart. There are one here and the other one at the extreme end. That is one role of the chucks. Another is Uh, the material in the middle does not spill into the bearing area where there, are, there will be grease. So the material does not contaminate by being in contact with the grease on both the sides. And the, another one is, if it goes there in contact with the grease, it also is 
uh, spoiled. So it, it prevents material wastage, it protects against uh, contamination, it uh, allows you to handle lesser volume batch, lesser batch volume. So here in this case, this section rep represents the gear and this is the drive system, motor and uh, uh, the motor, the reduction gear, the gear which connects front and back roads. So you have a reduction gear means the RPM of the motor is cut down to a smaller value and then this is connected through the gear to the back road and these two are uh, rotated through this gear system. And uh, you can see the one bolt here, one bolt here, there will be handle down which you can rotate to move the rolls back and forth so that the nip can be adjusted accordingly wherever we want. Normally you keep it between almost 0 to uh, 6 mm or 2 mm as the case may be. Normally it's kept around less than 2 mm. It depends on volume and depends on shear rate that is required. So another aspect is here you will have a tray, now it is not shown. If at all some material falls down that can be picked up from the tray and then put it back here so that your compound weight is as close to the theoretical value possible. When I say theoretical value, you understand how much rubber you are taking and other ingredients. Rubber 100, if you take, then you have all the other ingredients which you have learned in the class, starting from sulfur, I mean starting from polymer 100 to all the other ingredients. Uh, starting from the zinc oxide and stearic acid, uh, then you have the antioxidants, then you have the filler, then you have uh, the oil, uh, then if you have any other special ingredients, then you have sulfur and accelerator. So that sequence uh, you should remember. Normally, uh, I think you have been taught about this, you need to form a kind of band first on the mill before you add all the ingredients. You write normally a formulation in the same sequence as the sequence of addition. Sequence of addition of chemicals into the band. So when you, uh, you have to wait until a band is formed, uh, I think we will see a few videos in the due course, in due course and see how what is meant by a band. So once you have the band, then you can start adding all the ingredients which you have already pre-weighed and kept ready. The whole uh, secret is every batch has to be mixed in the same time, mixing time. Because the more mixing, the more uh, time it takes before it is dumped, it's here to different extents, higher and higher extent then that leads to more and more reduction in viscosity and then the sample consistency will be the casualty for such a, a mistake. So what's important is to keep the mixing time uniform. Depends. If you don't have any filler, it's ideal to finish the whole business in 8 minutes or around that. If you have more filler, then obviously it will take more time because you are adding filler in batches. If you have too much of filler, then you add in 2, 3, 4 portions. So every time you have to cut and uh, fold it back, so it normally takes more time. But uh, normally you keep it around 15 minutes or little more than that, and you have to complete that one thing. Second is, as a friction obviously is operational, there is going to be temperature rise, which has to be controlled by passing water through the rolls. So the rolls must be uh, provided with provision to pass water and the temperature should be contained to be less than 70 degree centigrade. It's an ideal case. Sometimes it goes up as well but then you control the uh, water flow. Uh, 
then the temperature is maintained. If you have more temperature, there are multiple problems. One is uh, the viscosity will be down, because of which the mixing efficiency will go down. Another is the thermal degradation will be more. Another is uh, the band will stick to the roll, and then the processing will be difficult. And uh, there can be a stage called bagging in between. That means this, uh, the, the material detaches from the roll surface and then you cannot process it. As the temperature further increases, then you are in trouble, then it will stick, then the whole thing cannot be processed. Now the problem is uh, if you have sulfur and accelerator, then there is a threat of uh, premature cure. You have premature cure, which you technically call a scorch. Then if it is scorched already, then uh, you have to discard the batch. So keeping temperature to required level or desired level is important for multiple reasons, which I mentioned. Now, if you look at the entire mechanism, in this figure, uh, the motor is shown right inside, it can be outside as well. Then there is a, a sudden stop mechanism, then there is a reduction gear, then there is, in this case, it is connected through a pulley and belt, pulley and belt. So there is, the, the uh, drive is through a belt, that is also possible, instead of gear one can use belt, uh, transmission belt. Then you have the bearing here, this time it says bearing, then the shaft and the roll. So the entire thing, this portion 2 is open, the entire section 3 is enclosed normally. And then there is a mechanism for exhaust and uh, driving and all the gas. So this is the anatomy of a typical role. It can come in different configurations, but the basic components remains more or the same. Uh, the positions, relative positions can be little different here and there. But the purpose is to have the roles driven by a motor through a stop mechanism, through a gear system, through through a pulley or gear system again, final transmission. So idea is the RPM here is 3600 or close to that and here what you need is a very small uh, RPM, single unit RPM. So, so the, the idea is to have a good bearing system, uh, then a complete control on the temperature first step. So the temperature control is done by giving drills. So board rolls and drilled rolls are possible. In the roll system here, this is a cross section. Below is cross section. So this is the all the shaft and all. But the water that comes in through is going through the hollow section here, which means the roll is basically hollow. And this is the thickness of the roll. So this has to support all the bending stress that is coming in because of uh, the mixing process. You can imagine this side is locked in, in the bearing, this side as well. So when you have material within here, then there can be bending stress and it is supported by this thickness, a roll of this thickness. So that is why uh, this thickness has to be maintained to a required minimum, otherwise the roll will bend, no roll will be damaged. So for, for the sake of protection, safety of the rolls, you have to keep this thickness as high as possible, but for the sake of temperature control, you have to make it as thin as possible because there is a conduction of heat. So the heat generated on the surface has to be conducted into the bulk and, and the liquid will take it away outside. So for that conduction process, the conduction channel, that means the thickness of the roll must be minimum. But uh, if you have minimum roll thickness, then here the threat of roll damage. So that is why 
the uh, uh, board role business is a little bit tricky. But uh, to make this kind of role is less expensive, more economical, and that is why it is used a little more widely in less critical areas than the drilled ones. In the drilled ones, the role is solid so that it can support big bending stress, it doesn't uh, get damaged. And the cooling is managed by drilling channels close to the periphery. So the water comes through the middle channel and then goes to the periphery, comes back and joins out. So this this mechanism is a bit difficult to implement. Machining cost will be higher, but it is more efficient because the heat conduction path is very small. So the cooling efficiency is uh, pretty higher. Uh, implementation is a bit difficult. I guess uh, we will have trouble as we go ahead because the power inside the department is gone. Obviously there will be a problem with the Wi-Fi. Let me see if I can keep my personal thing also open. Okay, now we'll go in this mode because then I'll understand when the Wi-Fi goes. So this is the uh, idea of cooling, how to maintain cooling. Now this is uh, the protection mechanism. This is our top view. You can see the chuck here and the roll is a little shiny, it's a uh, stainless steel one. And this is a device here because of which your hand will not go into the nape area. Nape area. So whatever is you are working, you have to work be, or be much away from the nip gap. And nip gap is a, uh, obviously if I use the term, it's a little monstrous. Because it looks very innocent, but uh, there are innumerable instances where people have lost fingers and hands in the nip. It's a little, uh, little uh, risky to handle two roll mill without proper care and protection devices. So this grill is a, one of the mechanisms by which your uh, protection is ensured. The idea is the nip gap is a place where you add all the ingredients one after the other. So you normally have your uh, single oxide or steric acid or sulfur or accelerator in separate uh, weighed uh, pieces as like in a paper or in a polyethylene or in aluminium uh, holders. So when you discharge that in the middle, by chance if the paper or the plastic or the aluminium happens to fall, slip hands and then happens to fall here your immediate uh, instinct will be to pull it out. Because that area is a little sticky, it is possible that uh, you touch uh, the rubber component and then your hand also will be pulled in, your fingers will be pulled in. So that natural instinct you have not much control over. So what you can do is to physically uh, prevent you from putting hands uh, in the nape. So this is a mechanism for human protection. Another mechanism is uh, this roll. This also prevents you to support kind of, uh, uh, you know, coming too close uh, to the name. Another is somewhere below, this will be normally the height, chest height. So at the bottom there will be another uh, mechanism in the knee height. 
because when you lean too, too close, I lost connection in between, I think now I'm audible. Am I? Am I audible to you now? I had problem with the uh, net connection, now it's connected. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I have, I, as I mentioned, the power failure has created problem. Now I'm on mobile data. So now uh, we were mentioning about the safety mechanisms. So here, uh, we have seen in the previous slide, there was, uh, this is what we have been discussing. Did you follow up to here? Did yes, sir. Okay. So the whole idea is, this will be, this roll will be almost in the chest height. So the bottom there will be another mechanism and the knee height whereas you lean forward if you are pulled in because for natural reaction you will try to pull back in the process your knee will be bent and that knee height there will be another uh, safety switch which will stop the rolls not only that but it will make it rotate in the opposite direction. So that the hand will be released if it is locked in. So this, uh, these rolls, the mesh that that you saw is preventing it. But other mechanisms, safety rod or safety 
switch at the knee height roll for stopping and re uh, reverting that means it will rotate in the opposite direction so that is the mechanism for protection protecting the operator now as i mentioned here this and this will be dial here and a dial here so that you know how much you rotated this so when you rotate this the nib gap will be altered it can be more or less but what you do normally is to put your rubber inside and it will rotate it will get to pull in so when you pull in you have some uh, material there which is kind of incompressible it will flow but it will not volume will not be reduced in that sense so because of which there is going to be huge stress on the roll to push it outside so in that stage the, the shaft on which it is fixed or the bearing on which it is resting sh uh, should not be damaged so there is a safety mechanism here uh, called uh, there is a plate mechanism so that when when the stress the force on the rolls is too much beyond the limit that mechanism will fail and the roll will uh, move a little far away from creating more space there so that instead of breaking the uh, shaft or bending the rolls the small piece of metal here uh, safety mechanism will fail and then this will move forward or outside creating the space so i i have mentioned two two different protection thing one is for the machinery that means you have the kind of plate here safety plate that plate will break when the load here is too much so that the bend is in the verge of i mean the roll is in the verge of damage or the holding mechanism uh, the roll and the shaft bearing and shaft to protect them there is a breaker kind of plate here which will damage itself it will fail itself and then the gap will be more so that you can only change that small piece of metal there and then rerun it if the roll is to be damaged then the whole thing is gone so that's a mechanism for protection of the machinery then the protection of the operator you see in the mesh in the top and the roll here and the uh, emergency switch at the knee height which also does the job of uh, stopping the roll and rotating it in the opposite direction you see this cup here one there one here and one here this is the lubricating mechanism for the bearing lubrication mechanism now we come to the operational part of the mill the mill has to, uh, you, what you do is you know you have the list of um, ingredients and the rubber so first you put it, uh, the rubber in the nib gap gap there here and then it is allowed to form a band like this this band is not formed immediately as you put in there you have to wait a little bit the rubber has to be sheared to some extent the band initially it doesn't it does not even form a band what you put will fall down because the gap there is about uh, 3 mm or 6 mm in the initial stage which you gradually reduce uh, and then uh, some kind of pre band will be formed and which will be taken by hand and forced put it here and then it will be loose band and will be a uh, tight band a smooth band only then you can add start adding all the ingredients the fundamental rule is when the band is not uniform and when the roll is visible through the cracks on the band when the roll is visible through the cracks breaks on the band then you don't put your ingredients because in that case the ingredients will go on to the space between the roll and the band between the roll and 
the band and then uh, that will not be mixed easy. Okay. So we have a few videos here uh, to see how does it work. So the gentleman is holding a knife in his hand. Is giving a, this is called a three-fourth cut. And he is feeding it in the other side. Now he will do the cut from the other side. Uh, and then feed it into the, this side. So when the... So this process is hap, happening for cross-mixing. Now you see... Now when such a band is formed, and this is called a bank, B-A-N-K, bank. Now what, you are supposed to add your ingredients in this gap only. Now the band is smooth, there is no metal seen, so that you can add, this is the time you can add your uh, ingredients. But when you add, uh, suppose, now this is uh, yellow color, if you add black here, that black will form a band a black mark will come here and that will remain there as long as it rotates but the black will not be laterally mixed that is the whole challenge in the two-row meal when you put something there it will be integrated into the system locally in that line it forms a ribbon kind of uh, area but then the lateral mixing is not happening unless you intervene so that is what you try to achieve by giving the three-fourth cut from both the sides. When you give a three-fourth cut, you are taking part of the unmixed material and a mixed material and then try to mix them here. And then next time when you give a cut here, you are doing the same on the other side. So overall, that is going to be a lateral mixing, uh, good mixing of the ingredient. So, what the roll does is to shear. But unless there is an interference manually, to take care of the lateral mixing, uh, there is no mixing, there is no good dispersion. So that is why the three-fourth cut from both the sides is very important. Now if you look at the other video, this is the last part of the mixing. What he puts there, as rolls, we will see from another video, ok, we will see here only. See, after uh, putting your uh, ingredients like zinc oxide and initially when you add zinc uh, oxide and stearic acid, when you add the rubber there, just rubber, the nib gap, is, gap will be set to a slightly higher value because the material that you put is a bigger chunk, maybe an uh, ISNR block pieces, so these are all big chunks. So then uh, the nib must be adjusted. Uh, to accommodate that. So once it is compressed and the size becomes smaller, then you gradually reduce your nib. So once you start uh, about uh, 2 millimeters or less than that, then you are kind of getting a kind of longer pieces which you can take from bottom and then feed it to the nib and it will tend to form a band. But obviously that will not be a smooth one. At that time you try to add uh, uh, stearic acid that will facilitate band formation. Once the band is about to form, then you add zinc oxide and also. So once that is done, you will get a good band. Then you add your antioxidant and filler and do the cutting and all. So once everything is done, all the ingredients except the curatives are gone, then you have to cut a lateral complete full length cut 
And what will happen? There will be a sheet at the bottom. If you hold your hand at the bottom, hand at the bottom, and then uh, the material will roll in your hand, and you'll get rolls. It is this roll that this gentleman is trying to put back in the roll. So when you take out the entire thing as a roll, the, the mill will be open, the rolls will be exposed. There are two reasons. One, the roll to the end of uh, mixing is hot. So you need to cool the mold. When you take the complete thing out and uh, roll into, uh, when you do that, the stock also get cooled, it gets cooled. So that roll will be fed into the system endwise. That's important. You roll it, then feed and then nip endwise. Endwise. So that it forms again. You see that how it it endwise it it gets spread out. It is not taking yeah, it, it's endwise. So then it forms a band. Actually, a band should not have this air uh, areas here. Should this move on? Look at that. How he is taking care that it is end fed. Now we'll start cutting it from sides. This is one way. Cut and then feed it there. So when you do that, but but uh, remember, when you give a full cut, roll it and fed it here, what if it falls down, you are not supposed to, uh, actually in sulfur, uh, uh, once that is done, then you will add a sulfur and accelerator here, and once that is done, once that sulfur accelerator is given, giving a three-fourth cut one and from both sides then you have to take the roll again and pass it six times endwise pass it six times endwise uh, so we are running into a, a risky area again my battery is draining I think we will have to stop uh, until the battery lasts we will continue so the whole idea is uh, you have to you have to cut it six times, uh, feed it six times, and wise, and finally sheet it out. When you sheet it out, you make sure that the nib gap is adjusted to the desired value. If you're going to make two mm sheets, then you have to keep your nib gap close to two mm. But if you are going to make a 6 mm product, then it will be better you make 6 mm sheet out of the 2 roll mill. So that is how it is managed. Or if you do it 2 mm, then you have to stack it 3 such things to get the 6 mm thick sheet so that that can be molded to the desired thickness. So I think you understood uh, the whole idea. But then now, the new idea is, there is a new technology being tried. or he is trying to uh, feed that endwise. Now look at that at the bottom. He is again cutting it uh, full length. If it is a smaller bulk, then you can roll it at the bottom here. Hold your hands up, palm up, then that will uh, roll in your hand and feed it. But if it, the bulk is very high, then you, you cannot hold it. In that such case, then you will cut it full length and then feed it again as a separate roll. So the entire uh, thing can be automated if you put a small band and fold it over the mechanism in the top and feed it here, then uh, you have uh, the automated system. So that is what is uh, shown here. From here if you give a cut and feed it in the top roll here, then that will feed in here. And the top roll, that feed coming in where it drops, 
can be moved from left to right by moving this uh, device here. So you will have a small band, then that will be draped over this, that will fall back into the system and then this will move back and forth in a continuous lateral mixing operation. So the manual intervention is minimized and the reproducibility is higher. Try to see what is happening here. Now you see this is a device that moves from uh, left to right but nothing is happening here at the moment. The only thing is the band is there. there. This is the uh, a band is here and the band is uh, kind of smooth. Now this device is run on this uh, screw here. This will come down, sit here and do the cut what a knife does at this point here. Now here this is kind of flowing, it's going on, but you see the as it comes down, you will start hearing here. So now this is kind of flowing, the material is being laterally moved to the band side. So this is a kind of uh, latest uh, technology being tested. I don't think it's being op it is operational. I think in the the mill, the Toral mill manufacturing people are testing it out. This is being collected here. This side is being this side is empty. In the sense there is no bank. This remains here, but this goes to one side. But then that is being forced to mix to the side. Now the beauty of this thing is, now half of the roll is empty while this is happening. So this is being utilized for a fresh batch. Now you see the big chunk is going and that is not forming a band. Now it is only just sticking and then the rest is exposed. Then we will add more 
material. This is this portion is helping to form the band. Not somebody is taking it by hand and putting it here. As it comes down, this will make sure that it is folded back into the roll. Now you see the broken sheet, torn sheet, and after some time, the tearing will uh, vanish because it is being masticated, nervous reduced, more nervous contained, and the molecular weight is reduced, viscosity is reduced, elasticity is reduced. So after some time, this will form a smooth band. So by the time this is ready, it can be dumb. It is being taken out from here through a cut, small sheet, small ribbon. So by the time this is exhausted, uh, this will come back here and then do the process again. Now you see the band is being tightened. It is a tight band is formed. So that is how the uh, stages proceed, different stages proceed. We will see what uh, stage means, stages mean. See, if this is not there, if this mechanism is in, this uh, technology is implemented, then by the, we have to wait till the entire thing is removed from here as small ribbon, and this portion of the male will remain underutilized. So this is a new technology, I think. If we come back here, uh, there are four stages you can visualize in a two roll mill. Let's see. So the back front roll is shown and the material in the early stage, stage one. And second stage is uh, band formation where you operate well. And uh, third stage is the band detaches. You get banking, uh, sorry, the sagging. It detaches and you get a sag sheet. And then you get a fourth stage where the material becomes too much sticky and uh, you cannot handle that. So this is not desirable. This is not desirable. You have to operate basically in stage two. This is happening for two reasons. One is gradual increase in temperature. Second is the more mastication. So temperature has to be controlled to avoid this. In zone one, the rubber is in the low temperature range and is an elastic solid. You understand? Zone one is here. There is no band formed yet. High hardness, high elasticity and difficulty in entering the roll gap. If it is forced to pass, it will be destroyed and the roll cannot be wrapped and the mixture cannot be mixed. So zone so 1, we are dealing with uh, material which is uh, discrete and doesn't form band. But when the temperature rises to range of zone 2, the rubber compound is highly elastic, solid, with plastic flow and appropriate high elastic deformation. The key term is appropriate high elastic deformation. Because there is elastic deformation, it clings on to the roll. The band is really very tight. Only then you can mill. After the roll is placed, roller is placed, the elastic roller is used to tightly wrap the front roll and the front roller does not break or roll which is convenient. The mixing operation facilitates the mixing and the dispersion of the composing ingredient. Now, uh, dispersion is the final thing that you are looking for. In a mixing operation, you can identify the in, in a, a, a few stages. Where you first add material, it's called incorporation. Then you broadly distribute that in the bulk, uh, in the macroscopic scale, then it's called dis distribution. Then it is disintegrated. The filler is disintegrated by to finer and finer particles and the 
it, it distributes quite very finely. Let me call it as a dispersion. Very fine dispersion is what you target at to get uniform dispersion. So the mixing operation facilitates the mixing and dispersion of the compounding ingredients. When the temperature rises to the range of re region 3, rubber compound is still in the viscoelastic solid state, but cohesive force and the tensile strength are greatly lowered and the fluidity is further increased so that it sags. So the cohesive force and the tensile strength are greatly reduced because viscosity is going pretty down. So it sags. When it sags, sagging is happening, then you don't mix. Now in the fourth stage, the bag is removed and decomposed from the bag. The mixing operation cannot be performed. Temperature rises to higher range of so and four. The rubber enters a viscous state, viscous flow state. After passing through the roll gap, although it can be wrapped on the roll surface, the elasticity is reduced to small extent, mainly due to plastic flow deformation, which causes the roll to adhere and is difficult to cut and refine. Causes the roll to adhere and viscous uh, and difficult to cut and refine. Therefore, during the mixing mill. Mixing in the mill, the temperature of the roll should be maintained within the range of zone 2 to prevent an entry into zone 1 or 3. Zone 2, where you have a smooth, elastically, more elastic and tight band around this. Here, you, here also you have a band, but it is elastically less uh, strong, less tensile strength, uh, so and it sticks too much, then you cannot. Mix. That is the uh, for ranges of mill. Now, if you look at a closer, uh, okay. One of the roles or the main role of a two roll mill is basically mixing, but it is used sometimes in conjunction with another uh, system called uh, another batch system. Uh, this part we will see later, but this you imagine like a two roll mill. And then this is where the discharge from here comes in. Discharge from here comes in and then after forming a band, you can cut a ribbon of desired width and put it into a escalator kind of range system. This is a belt passing with rolls on that. So the band, the ribbon that you cut of sufficient width will pass over this and will be transported either to another two roll mill for further refining. This is for uh, making a sheet and this is for refining. This is also for improving uh, dispersion. Each of this stage is for better dispersion. Idea is instead of changing the to deep gap here, you can change the friction ratio here to a different value, to different value, to different value and finally for cooling. So the, the method here is either you can pass it and let it fall over this. So this moves a little bit one side, it falls directly over here and then goes over this and then goes over this. But if you want to bypass this and this, you can put another conveyor that comes into place and then takes directly into this stage and into this and it goes here. So these are all the different. Uh, layout in a factory setup for treating a material that's coming from another batch operator called internal mixer. We'll see that uh, in a few minutes. But uh, because we've been talking about two-roll mill, two-roll mill can be used for mixing. It is also used for uh, refining, I mean, final dispersion improvement of the uh, batches mixed in a two-roll, in an internal mixer. So the mechanism is to get a sheet refined here, refined here, refined here, refined here. Finally, you get a sheet of desired width. And then it go, this one goes, it starts from here. It, because this is a belt which moves forward, now the belt will come here, then it, what is coming down will fold here, then it goes over here, and then it goes over. It, what is shown is only part of the game. 
this is a complete uh, endless loop. So the material will be hanging over the rolls and there will be huge number of fans heating, I mean blowing from one side so that it will be cooled. Uh, at the end there will be a wig wag. It was called wig wag. W I G hyphen W A G which is uh, kind of mechanism to fold the sheet one over the other. When you want to fold the sheet one over the other, uh, this end side is See when you sorry. when the sheet comes from one side and then uh, rolls over this, this is a mechanism for carrying the belt go, goes over like this, and the sheet comes over, it will be transported and transported, it will start falling here. Now this will execute a motion like this, it will go like uh, the elephant trunk, it goes up and down. So what will happen is, this sheet that will come down here will be folded one over the other and it will be stacked like this, of equal width. And this will be in a trolley and after some time it will be cut and then it will be moved to one side. So the whole idea is uh, this is called this is called the uh, wig bag. So that is what happens. So after going uh, through this, this is for cooling and further it goes to the wig bag and then it will be folded one over the other and can be stored overnight or can be taken to further processing. So that is also a role played by the two roll mill. Now if you look at some of the figures here, this figure, if you watch closely, If you watch closely, you will notice a few points. One is this side is open. This is where you put all the chemicals. So there can be spillover, there can be gases released, and some of them can fall, which you obviously take it back here, but there can be still possibility of loss. Then they, there can be contamination from this side, and there can be manual intervention, so the mix quality depends quite a lot on the operation operator skill. So the spillage, the loss of material, then the uh, contamination. Some of the material can fall in here from outside, can be contaminated from the grease from sides. So the contamination of the bulk and pollution of the environment through the gases released, spillage of the material, loss of material, and the mix quality dependence on the skill of the operator. And finally, limitation with respect to the uh, batch volume. You can mix uh, 10 uh, kilos or 1 kilo or maybe 25 kilos or something like that. You normally don't uh, try to do a main mixing of 100 kilos or 200 kilos on a total mill. So that you don't do. So, to overcome all these drawbacks, what are that? Uh, contamination of the stock from outside, spillage to outside, 
release of gases, exhaust gases, and then the duration, time duration. It takes a long time to get the entire things done, maybe half an hour up to, it can go, depending on the uh, ingredients. Uh, then uh, the skill of the operator depends on that. So all that uh, makes it less attractive. But what makes it attractive is the expense in terms of installation is less. And the space which it occupies is also less. Compared to the solution people have brought in uh, for these problems. And that solution is called an internal mixer. Internal mixer. So, we will uh, take a look at that internal mixer. Internal mixer is basically an enclosed uh, chamber with two openings on two sides and the two rolls fixed in the middle, in the, in the bulk, at volume, void space. But then imagine this is not a two roll roll of a two-roll mill, but it operates more or less in the same way, in the, fa in the sense that this will operate, this will rotate in opposite directions. But then the roll diameter is not fixed, it is not a cylindrical one. The roll diameter is a little complicated, it will be difficult to draw, but then what is envisaged is, all the operation that is happening in the two-roll mill by itself and the operations done by the operator by cutting and feeding all that should happen within this chamber without uh, any external agency taking part in the process. The, everything is enclosed in a chamber. This is a very massive chamber here. All these blue sections are the cooling channels and this is the end view of the rotors. You don't call it rolls anymore, you call this rotors. Internal mixer rotor. So you see here, from the end, it looks in a drop like shape, and then here there is a projection, and the entire thing is a different shape here. So here there is a projection, a projection, and this. So if you, if you just search internet for inter, internal mixer rotors, you will find innumerable shapes for such a rotor, such rotors. All of them are designed with one basic aim to improve dispersion and mixing efficiency. You must be able to get maximum dispersion in short as possible time. So when you compare this with a total mill, if you, if you encounter mixing cycles in, term, in terms of 20 to 30, minutes, here you are talking about uh, uh, one and a half minutes to uh, five minutes in two roll mix, in, in internal mixers. So here in internal mixer you are handling 150 kg or 200 kg per batch. Now you see the improvement in output. You are talking about 100 and 200 kg per mix and per mix it takes only three and a half minutes or four minutes. It is a final batch. So. Uh, you see the advantage in terms of uh, output. But keep in mind, uh, the extent of dispersion that you get in the output for this internal mixer, what I say is the quality of the mix or the dispersion level, is obviously uh, inferior to what is happening in a two-roll mix. So here you get higher output, huge uh, bulk volume, but then uh, the dispersion is not as desirable. So what you do is, that is what you have seen before. The thing will be dropped onto a series of rolls, as you have seen a little bit earlier, and then it will be refined in every uh, consecutive rolls, and finally the sheet will be stored. So the beauty is, in three minutes one batch falls. False means you have an opening here and opening here. This is where the batch comes in. After mixing, this is where the batch goes out. 
So this door will be opened and whatever is there will fall in shortest possible time. So the entire thing inside the cavity is emptied uh, onto the mill in the shortest possible time. So the doors are specially designed for quick release of the material from here. So once it falls onto the two roll mill at the bottom, the, the, there will be a bank. So because the entire thing is falling onto the mill, there will be a bank. And then that bank will be exhausted almost completely, but without exposing the more rolls, the next uh, batch from here will fall. So this becomes a continuous operation. Even though it is a batch operation in the uh, internal mixer, the output processing is kind of continuous. It is synchronized. A batch is more or less consumed on the two roll mill and to make it in the sheet before the next batch comes in. So because the mixing time can be very closely controlled and monitored and maintained, batch to batch variation can be minimized. Because the mill cutting or whatever cutting and lateral mixing happening here is happening automatic and these two are rotating in opposite direction. Now you see there is a small gap here. But as it moves to this side, this portion comes in which has got a small diameter so the gap here increases by the time this comes in here also this this moves in this direction this moves in this direction so the where does uh, shear happen in the whole process look at that this gap is small and this gap is less by the time it is in the horizontal actually in the in the uh, Nine o'clock position here, the gap is uh, minimum, minimum possible. So imagine it is sweeping from here and going and going up and up like here. So that means the material will here experience a shear deformation. This will be folded and then sheared and then again folded. So shearing is happening at this point between the rotor tip and the uh, mixer wall. Between the rotor tip and the mixer wall, there is mixing happening. But look at this. Uh, normally, there are two types of possibility. When the volume it sweeps here and the volume it sweeps here don't overlap. It can overlap or it cannot overlap. If uh, normally uh, if it is not overlapping, then the gap here will be more and then shearing in this area will not be very effective. There is not much shearing happening there. Because the rolls, each one of them with their, uh, with, their, with their different shapes, you can imagine a cylinder of this diameter all around here and a cylinder of this diameter all around here and then it may not be overlapping. But if they are closer by, then this volume element and this volume element are synchronized. I mean, they are overlapping. Now you see, there is a risk here. What if this tip and this tip after some rotation comes at the same point here? There is no problem if they are not intermeshing. So they can rotate on its own. Whatever happens, they can do that. So in such case, these two can afford to move in different speed, like in the case of a two-roll mill. So when they are not intermeshing, when the volume elements don't overlap, then they are rotating in, same, uh, in a different speed differential speed. But if they have a phase angle, phase difference between them, so now look at this, there is a gap of uh, this much angle between them. So that ratio will be maintained all through so that the nips don't come here at same point. If that happens, that will hit each other because they are overlapping. 
the volume elements are overlap. So to make sure that they don't crash, the speed is maintained exactly same. Speed is maintained exactly same. So even if there is uh, a small, very minute uh, difference between them, after a large number of revolutions, a stage will come then they will overlap and then they will come at the same point at the same time. So that is why it is very important to have them rotate in the same RPM all the time. So that you can have a closer alignment of the rotors. Why do you take so much of care? Because when the rotors are very close by, when the nip goes around this plane surface, plane area here, when the tip goes around this root, there can be shear, shearing here as well. Otherwise, shearing is limited to the wall and the rotor. Now here there is a possibility that the rotor uh, and rotor, between the rotor there can be shearing as well. So you stand to get better shear or a better or a shorter mixing cycle for an overlapping type of intermix, internal mixers. So you call this an internal mixer, there are rotors of differing shape that can be overlapping or non-overlap. Depending on that, they can rotate either in the same speed or differential speed. Now the question is, how do you put all your ingredients here? This is a ram which can go up and down. And then bottom portion here and the door upper portion will define the internal shape. Normally, it is called the shape of a W. This shape is completed by uh, the rotor, sorry, the ram and the door together along with the uh, chamber. So you have a W-shaped uh, space here in which two rotors of differing shape are running, ro rotating in opposite direction. That is obvious. This is moving in this direction and this is moving in this direction. So they are rotating in opposite direction, that is obvious. But then are they running in equal speed or in different speed? In two roll mill they are doing it in equal uh, different speed because you need a friction ratio at the gap. But here they are, uh, if they are running in uh, uh, very close proximity and the friction is implemented between the rotors, the friction is implemented between the rotors, then, then, then they must be, we can afford to run them in differential speed and you can, you can afford to run them in same speed. But if you are looking at differential speed, then they cannot be close enough to have uh, shearing between the rotors. So they are running on different uh, separate volume elements. There is no overlap of that, those volume elements. Uh, but they are running in different speed. So that is a differential speed between the rotors. So the entire machinery would look like this. So the motor here, all that, but this is the entire uh, two roll mixing mill, uh, two roll mill, sorry, the internal mixer. Look at this, this is connected, this is chamber is, uh, this chamber is closed and this is a place where what you see as a square area, I mean this entire thing can open outside. So if you, the other thing is for dumping. So this size cannot be uh, misleading. This has to be, this is actually misleading in the sense. If you imagine this is, this portion occupies the first floor, I mean uh, second floor, second floor of a building this line, this side, this is almost touching the second floor top and this portion is in the floor of the second floor. There. 
ആയ തെങ്ങിനെ മാർത്തി കയറ്റണ്ടേ അല്ല വീട്ടിലേക്ക് വീട്ടിലേക്ക് യെസ് ഓക്കെ അപ്പൊ അതൊന്ന് മേടിക്കാല്ലോ ഹലോ പതിനൊന്ന് മണിക്ക് വിളിക്കാൻ ക്ലാസ്സിലാണ് സോ ദിസ് പോർഷൻ ഓക്കിപ്പൈസ് ദി സെക്കൻഡ് ഫ്ലോർ ദിസ് പോർഷൻ വിൽ ബി ഇൻ ദ ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഫ്ലോർ ദി ബോട്ടർ പോർഷൻ വിൽ ബി ഇൻ ദ ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ഫ്ലോർ റൂഫ് ലൈക്ക് ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് ഹാഫ് ടു ദ റൂഫ് ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് ഹാഫ് ഫ്രം ദ റൂഫ് സോ ദ എൻറ്റയർ മെഷിനറി ഈസ് ലിറ്റിൽ ഹ്യൂജ് it's highly uh, massive because you have to handle so much of rubber in one go and then drive drive unit must be very robust so this is another view of the same this is hydraulic system to open the door here and this is hydraulic system to operate the ram from the top so what do you feed when you when the this okay when this door opens this is where you feed the material and it comes in here this is the ram which you operate from the top which comes down and completes the shape and this is the uh, this is where you have the door operation and this is a mechanism to operate the door hydraulic system this will open open here and this will create now these are the rotors they rotate in opposite direction now you see the shape this is one of the innumerable shapes see they are running in opposite direction when there is a projection here this side is flat when this projection comes the other side that will be flat so that is how it is making complementary rotors and here what you see is the cooling channel drilled so what you have to imagine is this even though this is the end view I mean, it is the end view, but then there, you can imagine the roll projecting to the front and the back side if you wish. That means the roll, the rotors, the rotors have this much uh, length, that means this portion has this much depth. If you see it as end, then this much depth is there to the behind, back side of the nail here, the, rot, the internal mixer. So the pressure numeric system will come down, whatever is sticking here all that will be done down and kept under pressure with this it's same thing in a simpler version the discharge door here door you see the door at full very faithfully completes that w shape and the ram here which will again complete the shape here the hop material comes in here this is the casing Uh, the channel for cooling and the rotor and this is fixed thoroughly on the on the ground this is uh, a two roll mill you have seen before ah it is uh, one and the same uh, figure only thing is the door is now closed with respect to this fulcrum this can drop it drops now what happens when the rotor rotates the chunks will have a space here because it will come down now it will again close now one thing you will remember is the chamber volume here gives attract the volume of the rotors if you subtract the volume of the rotors you get certain volume there if you take that as v0 you will not fill the chamber with v0 material or the volume of the material that you put will be anything between uh, 65 to 90 of the percentage of the available volume that's called fill factor that depends a lot on the type of mix and is it a master batch or is it breaking down or depends on that but if you keep completely tight 100% uh, volume there is uh, 150 liter 
then you add repeated of your material, then there is no mixing at all. You need space for the material to play around. But if you extend that argument, if you have only space and a little bit of material, there is no mixing again. So there is an optimum, 80 to 85 or 90, maybe even as low as 65, but not less than that. So that much uh, is called fill factor, 0.65 or 0.8 or 0.9, that's what is fill factor. So with that fill factor, you, the material will be added. the ramus here you can also have see if there is gaseous product here which can be sucked out and uh, i think this is the suction mechanism this is where you operate out take it out i mean open the door and then when you put material there and you put black and all there can be gaseous uh, fine powder which will uh, need not be just to be protected then you can have uh, discharge, I mean suction layer, but this pressure is applied while the rotor is rotating. You can imagine when the material is pushed in because of the rotation, uh, the material will tend to go up if there is a space. So you need to close it down. And uh, the pressure is applied such that when there is too, much, too less pressure, then this will jerk this material will jerk here the ram but if you don't prevent such uh, jerk you apply too much of pressure it doesn't move at all it is completely hard rock like that also is not recommended a very minor uh, movement up and down is permitted and that pressure is maintained here not too big so that doesn't move at all not too less so that it jerks so it will be a very smooth up and down movement for this depending on the RPM here. So that uh, that pressure is maintained. So that is uh, the internal mixer. Then the rest of the things you mentioned here. So I would like you to be able to draw <coughs> any one of these figures, not this one, <coughs> any one of these figures and a few rotor design. These are all for your information, how it looks like. In a laboratory scale, it's called a Brabender mixer. We have one in the lab. And uh, there is also Hake mixer, Thermo Hake. H double A K he K E Hake mixer. So here the chamber is again W shaped, the rotors there, they are driven by back side. So instead of this door opening, you have a plate here which completes the chamber. That plate is removed now. So this is a threaded pin and the plate will be closed here and then a uh, nut will be placed so that the chamber is available and then it rotates. Look at this, uh, they rotate So this, this you can see here, this the portion that will come down and uh, this is the ram that will lock here. So that this will complete the shape and you have the end of W shape or you can say H shape or whatever you like. So that is the case. Now you see this road and this road. That is uh, for removing this plate as well. So this is a rectangular plate with this opening machined very easily so that it can be taken out as well. And this is an oil heating mechanism. Oil goes in and this will be heated. So the chamber will be heated in this case because you are not uh, using rubber here. This is mainly for plastic mixing in this case. So when you have plastic mixing, you need to have heating here. This plate can be either heated electrically or using oil. In this case, it is oil heating, oil connection. 
or if you are if you are using rubber mixing then you can use it for cooling as well it's a laboratory case laboratory size thing if you happen to be in the campus you can uh, uh, when you come next time you can see this in the lab one in the lab 2 and one in the uh, physical testing lab Now what we mentioned about uh, the cooling, this is cooled and this rotors also can be, need to be cooled. So that provisions are all given there. So these provisions are given, cooling provisions, so that the, the material does not get scorchy. That is one thing. Second is, now in this case, in this case the door opens like a drop down, it drops. Now that kind of door is sliding door, that means this will be like a table drawer. You can pull it to one side, it will slide and uh, you will get an opening there through which the dumping will happen. This one is a one time operation. It just drops and everything comes down. The other one is because the, the opening takes a little uh, definite time because it's only slides and sliding is a bit slow so it is only a little slower. That is also operated by hydraulic uh, system. This drops and it is closed. This, uh, this is also hydraulically operated. So sliding drawer type uh, door or drop down type door. Now there is another uh, complicated door. Now you see this is a cut section. So if you imagine this is the end section and this is now opened. Imagine a case where this side of the uh, chamber can be opened up like, uh, like the bonnet of a car. Imagine you have uh, uh, this one instead of sliding out through this, if you have a hinge here and this plate can be opened uh, like a uh, car bonnet, not exactly like that, but this one, this plate instead of taking it away, removing it separate, keep it over a hinge here and then this portion can open up. Then what happens? The entire thing is there and can be discharged. So that is also technology that can be applied here. Here the side door, side of the chamber can be opened up and then discharge can happen. So these are the three kind of kinds of doors possible for discharge. But remember the drop down is simplest to create and there is slide and the other one is side. Uh, chamber side opening but then that is a little uh, uh, complicated because once you close it that has to be kept in so much pressure so that the material does not force the door open because of internal pressure but otherwise if you can open then the discharge can be very easy the discharge can be in the shortest possible time so that is uh, regarding the internal mixer the rest of the part from the from what drops down is what is uh, processed in this in I'm sorry where is it yeah in this figure so what drops in down will be big chunks you can imagine that it is not forming a band in the uh, in the internal mixer because the material is being divided around the two rotors. So these are the big chunks being operated, being mixed in the, uh, being handled in the chamber. So once the chamber opens up, the big chunks will fall onto the mill. So from here will be transfer, processed as you have seen before. So a two-roll mill in itself, I mean sorry, internal mix in itself is not a complete mixing solution. It needs the support of uh, this set of uh, further inline processing. Now, uh, what you do in a, in a mixer, 
Now the first layer. When you open this, you have to add all the ingredients in shortest possible time. Why is it? Because why is it? Because in two-roll meal, you are you are talking about ten minutes or fifteen minutes or time. Then if you take half a minute for feeding or one minute for feeding, uh, one minute is uh, a smaller fraction. But when you have only one and a half minutes for mixing, then if you take one minute for feeding, then that is a huge loss. That is why feeding can be need to be a need to be critically looked at and to be made possible in shortest possible time. That is done by automating the system. Uh, this will be opened up, and there will be a conveyor system here with the balance attached. So when you have all the ingredients being uh, placed here on the on the conveyor belt, weighed to a respective amount, then as the as the the conveyor belt here rotates one direction, all the ingredients will fall here. And this will jerk in between so that it all falls here. And the oil, there can be a mechanism to inject directly in. You don't have to add. So, because the conveyor belt can put them all together in, in continuous running mechanism mode, the feeding is in the shortest possible time. So once it is fed in here, so the sequence will be written, programmed in the system, so that the operation is totally automated. Ram up. Then the ram up zero time, if you imagine. Then the feeding happens in uh, 10 seconds or 15 seconds. Then you say ram down. The rotor is continuously running. Ram, ram down. Then after the 30 seconds, uh, ram up a little bit. Ram pressure will be eased. Then again, ram down. This way, this is for improving the mix quality. This way, you will. Uh, define the operational protocol. What time the ram will be down, what will be the breathing time will be given, what time the full pressure will be applied, what time continuously it will be kept in the system, at what RPM, at what time it will be dumped. I use the term time deliberately. I can also say at what point it will be dumped. I think a point will be a better term at what point it will be did down. So if it is a master batch, master batch, where you only have the ingredients uh, other than the sulfur and the thing, then uh, one protocol. If it is just breaking down, mastication kind of, then uh, no ingredients except one or two, then that can be passed easily down. When you have uh, uh, final mixing, that is the smallest, uh, shortest time, mixing cycle. So whatever we, it, it, it moves it move between one minute or one and a half minutes to three and a half minutes, four minutes to the maximum five minutes. So that is how it goes. But then it is not always the time that controls. That is why I, I said at what point is it the time? At this much time after the ramp down, after three and a half minutes or so many seconds, it will be dumped. That is one possibility. Another possibility is at what temperature. You are continuously monitoring the temperature of the stock because there are thermocouples here. So that at what temperature you want to dump. That is also a protocol. You don't uh, too much worry about the time. Once the temperature comes to 100 or uh, 70 or 85 whatever is there, then uh, irrespective of the time it remains in the system, it will dump. Or you can also take uh, the energy input as a parameter to dump. Energy input as a parameter for dumping. That means so much of uh, joule that is worked. That means it is integrated over time. Whatever is uh, energy input times the time will uh, cumulatively add what is the total energy that is input. When the Tempor uh, energy comes to one point, then you will dump. At that time, it can be difference in there can be difference in temperature, there can be difference in time as well. But your parameter is the energy. So that is the dump criteria. What I have talked about is the dose discharge criteria, discharge mechanisms. Then the dump criteria. The uh, now the other portion is the. Uh, 
mixing mechanism how the rotors the special design ensures cross mixing of the material or how the dispersion what all uh, processes are going on when the rotors are rotating because of which there can be better dispersion i think that part will uh, continue with them tomorrow when we when we meet so i think for today we'll stop here uh